Hi, and welcome to Yoga with Tim. I'm Tim. In today's class, we're gonna do a nice, well-rounded, full-body yoga flow. We're gonna have a focus on strengthening to the front of the leg and the hip flexor to help to open up the back of the leg in the back. You'll feel that when you do forward folds, you have a little bit more control and some deeper opening for the back of the spine and the backs of the legs. We'll also do some great core work that's going to get information from that work that we did at the beginning. Let's start off on the back so that we can let go and open up. Before we get started with today's class, I wanna encourage you to join my membership site, The Conscious Movement Community. The CMC is a course that I put together to help you to deepen and advance your practice from whatever level you're at. In addition to the CMC course, You'll also get access to all of my exclusive workshops and courses, and you'll get exclusive weekly classes that are an hour and 30 minutes, depending on what you have time for. Becoming a Conscious Movement Community member helps to keep the Yoga with Tim channel going. So I appreciate all the members. Thanks for joining. Now let's get into today's class. And close your eyes, go inward. Start with breath observation. So let your body relax. And notice the breath moving in through the nose to fill up the lungs from the bottom up to the top. And allow for the breath to start to slow down. It's said that we have certain samskaras or these deeply held patterns. We can get stuck in our ruts, in our, in our deep patterns and grooves. Sometimes they benefit us. Sometimes having a nice pattern or routine is very beneficial for our development. but sometimes not so beneficial. This of course is also on the physical plane, how we move our bodies. We tend to get stuck in these ruts and to change that requires great focus, dedication, and often discomfort as we learn to move in new ways. A great way that we can set ourselves up to move in a new way is by completely relaxing and emptying and letting go of what we tend to hold when we go to stand up or be seated. So lying down is a great way to let go in a way become reborn. Now stretch your legs out along the ground. Supta Tadasana. And as you reach out through the four corners of your feet, let your thighs descend. Feel your breath has more room, more freedom. And with your toes pointed up, drive down through your right heel and lift your left leg up as high as you can. And slowly lower and lift up. As the leg comes up, you keep the shoulders relaxed, the spine maintains its length, and we're gonna lift and lower six times. So we're strengthening the mountain pose line in the body as we work on strengthening through the front of the leg to open up the back of the leg. So the body is like that. By strengthening through the front, we can open up the back and vice versa. Flexibility without strength is just half of the coin. Change legs now, or one side of the coin rather.
when you find the top position, squeeze there and hold for a moment before you lower down again. And really feel what's on the front contracting so the back can open up. Then set that foot down, hug your knees to your armpits, and roll the knees around a bit. Change the direction. Roll up to seated. Come on to hands and knees for the spine wave. Round to your back. Inhale into extension. Exhale to round your spine. Inhale into a back bend. Exhale to round. Inhale. Curl your toes, lift knees, stretch back. Press the floor down and away from you. Shift forward to plank pose. Hold your plank. Now your call, do five chaturanga push-ups or five of the scapular push-ups. Scat push-ups are a great way to build the core strength to be able to do good chaturanga push-ups. But if you already have that and the mobility needed, you can go for the full thing. Good, now come into plank on your forearms. We're gonna do round two of the toe taps. Tuck your butt, keep your low abs turned on and your neck long, spine long, reach into your forearms. Lift the leg and reach out to the side, tap, back to center, 30 seconds. Lower hips down, come into Sphinx Pose. And then clasp your hands, lift up into Down Dog on your forearms. As you reach down through the forearms, raise the left leg. Connect the space between your right big toe mount and second toe mount as you stretch and lift and reach. Stay calm with the breath. Change legs. Now lower that leg, drop your knees down, stretch back into child's pose. Then glide forward into upward facing with the knees down. You could do it with the legs straight if you prefer. Stretch back into child's, but can you keep the bottom of your rib cage away from the ground so that your shoulder opens up? Instead of letting the rib cage hang, lean the collarbones towards the ground. So you get a real shoulder opening. Come forward, glide forward and lengthen the back of the tailbone towards the ground, towards the backs of the knees and the ground. So you open up your heart. Stretch back as you exhale. Glide 
Fly forward as you inhale. Stretch back to downward facing dog. Press the ground away. As you press into your right hand, bring your left hand to your right shin or ankle. Change, left hand down, right hand twist. Change side. And change sides. Bring both hands down, step your right foot to the front of the mat, and then walk your hands around to the middle of the mat. Now we're gonna work on opening up the inner legs and the adductors. So from Arda Prazerita, bend your right knee, lunge to the right, stretch to the left inner leg, change sides. Bend your left knee, lunge to the left, stretch to the right inner leg, Change sides. You might be able to go deeper and spin the left toes and sit the hip deeper. Change sides. You might be able to sit the hip closer towards the heel or even drop all the way down depending on your flexibility. One more round, change sides. And change sides. Come back to center, fold forward down the middle, take a deep breath, come back into the flat back position and with your hands on your hips, come up to stand. Turn your right leg out, step forward to the front of your mat. Bring your hands behind your back into reverse prayer or you can just press your knuckles together if you're not able to do reverse prayer. Step your left foot back about three and a half feet. And as you reach down into your right foot evenly, the heel, big toe mound and little toe mound, roll your heart open, lift up. And as you exhale, lengthen out over the right leg. Keep spreading and opening up the right foot evenly into the ground so that you get a complete stretch in the back of the right leg. Then interlock your hands and reach your knuckles up and overhead. If your shoulders are tight and you get stuck, you're limited. Better to take a space between your hands so you can get the full shoulder extension that we're looking for. And that could be a strap or a towel or even a stick, broomstick, etc. Last three breaths here. As you stretch out over your leg, Keep opening the feet, the foot evenly and reach to the back leg as the back of the skull drops down. Breathe through your nose, stay calm. Then inhale into a flat back position, keeping your nervous system calm. There shouldn't be any shakiness or any strain. Now from here, we're gonna do bent knee warrior three with the fingertips on the ground. If you're less flexible, put the hands onto blocks and step up. Find the long spine like when you're doing Ardha Uttanasana and keep opening the right foot evenly into the ground. Again, we're working with a little bend in the right knee. Stretch through your back leg as you grow the spine long. Remember, at the beginning of class, we had to point the toes straight up to the sky. 
So here, point the left toes straight down to the ground as you lengthen. Bend your right knee completely and step back in a crescent lunge. Bring hands to prayer. Step up to balance on your right leg. Bring your left knee up. Last part, balancing on this leg. Arms to your side, left leg straight out. Tighten up the quadriceps. Tighten front of the leg stuff to open back of the leg, but grow tall. Feel the mountain pose line here, just like when you're lying on your back at the beginning. Take the arms forward and up. Control your left leg down to the ground. Stand in mountain pose. Inhale into chair pose. Wrap your right leg up and over your left and cross your right elbow under your left for eagle pose. Uncross, stand in mountain pose, Samastiti. Feel your left foot, feel your right foot. Join to together the awareness of your right and left. And then step your right foot back about three and a half feet with the hands into reverse prayer or just knuckles pressed together. Inhale, lift up your heart, roll your chest open. Exhale, stretch out over your left leg now. Ooh. Feel your left foot even into the mat, the heel, big toe, and little toe mount. And let the bottom of the foot open up. Then clasp your hands and reach your knuckles up and over or use your strap or towel. Keep stretching into your left foot evenly to open up the back of the leg better. Inhale into a flat back. And you can hold here for five breaths or do fingertips to floor or fingertips to block, depending on your flexibility. Step back and come into crescent. If you spend a lot of time at a desk looking at a screen, especially when you're practicing, see if you can look 
it's just slightly above the horizon. Feel the core of the neck tall and the core of the lumbar spine lengthening down towards the ground. Now bring hands to prayer. Step up to balance on the left leg. Bring the right knee up, arms at your side. Stretch the right leg straight out and turn on the quad stuff just above your knee, hip flexor. See if you can point your toes straight up to the sky. Then arms forward and maintaining mountain, raise the arms straight up. Come on, squeeze your leg up. Leg weighs a thousand pounds in that pose for some reason. Control your leg down. Sit into chair pose. Cross your left leg up and over your right and cross your left elbow under for eagle. Eyes soft, straight ahead, tongue passive, smooth, steady breathing, joining together effort and surrender. Effort to maintain the position, the surrender once you're in it. Uncross and stand a mountain. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Vinyasa. Now sit for Upavista Kanasan. Okay, we're gonna finish with some of that side body stuff. So from this position, bring your left leg, heel towards the pubic bone, turn to face the left knee and smooth the knee down and away from you. Then reach with your right hand towards your left, foot, inner leg, and as you plug both sides of the right side down evenly, reach your left arm overhead, or you can go hand behind the head, or if you're really flexible, you might be able to catch the foot. Don't be such a show off, okay? Wherever you're at in your stretch, find the sensation, joining together effort and surrender. Come back up, take your left leg wide, bring your right heel in, turn to face the right knee and let the knee smooth down and away from you. Then reach with your left hand, slide along your left inner leg and reach the right arm over. You can hold the arm overhead or catch the foot or slide the hand behind your head. 
just keep the feeling of both sides of the rib cage, the left rib cage, the front and back sides plugging evenly towards the hip. Then come back up with both legs wide, fold forward down the middle. You might be able to catch your feet or put your chest on the ground, or you might just be completely upright and that might be a deep enough stretch for you just to sit upright. No judgment, don't critique here. Remember your practice is about being where you're at and working your own edge. So you find your edge by moving up to the barrier of stretch where it feels like, oh man, I, might, I can't go any deeper than this. And you pause right there and instead of trying to push into the barrier, you just pause there and breathe. And then you notice by practicing the non-resistance that the barrier begins to move on its own. It does require effort. It's not a completely passive thing. You have to have the discipline, focus, tapas, and drive to be able to move right up against that barrier and be there and practice conscious breathing, practice stillness. Practice concentration. And you'll notice that as you do that, things start to change for you. Hatha yoga is the yoga of the will. So we're learning what exactly is the appropriate amount of willpower. and how exactly to apply it. Come back up. I felt nice. Lie down onto your back. Now we're going to completely surrender the will. Let go, give up. Take one last deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs completely. Keep going, keep going, keep going all the way. And let it out through your mouth. <sighs> let the body drop. Now gently 
bend knees and roll over to your side. Press yourself up. One time my teacher said something about how, on this topic of samskaras, about how after he I, I had spent, he had been in India for about a month or two with BKS Iyengar, and he said he woke up one morning and it felt like he didn't even know who he was anymore. And this being on the topic of learning to move differently. At the end of the practice, when the practice goes well, I get a taste of that sensation. I don't know if you do too, but it's almost like you've completely let go of everything, everything that you know about the body or yourself if the practice went really well. That's pretty cool. Bring the palms together. And if you feel comfortable to join me chanting Om one time. And if your own went well, you'll start to manifest animals, apparently. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste.